Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Linda, Linda See Me here. Thank you guys for joining me for another video. So, by the title, you guys can see that your girl moved to Sweden. I know you're probably thinking why. Like, why would you leave London and move to Sweden? But do you know what? I'm so glad with the decision that I made. I just wanted to make this video to basically take you guys for a journey. I want to be vlogging my experience here and showing you guys the things that you need if you're planning on moving here. I wanted to share five things I wish I knew before I moved to Sweden. So the first things first. First things first that I wish that I knew about before I stepped foot into this country is mobile bank ID. Mobile, mobile bank ID. Now that thing, that concept of that mobile bank ID, I had no idea about it. Like, I know you're probably thinking, what the hell is that? Let me explain. But mobile bank ID is basically a system where it's used to identify you as a person. It's basically a form of identification. Now, in order to get mobile bank ID, the catch side of it, the catch 22, is that you must have a Swedish bank account. And that in itself is so difficult because in order to get a Swedish bank account, you also have to have a job because they have to see that you're getting paid from a job into an account and then they can activate your mobile bank ID. Like it's so confusing and I'm trying to explain it the best way I can. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is that you need mobile bank ID. Without it, you can't do anything. You literally cannot do anything. You can't even get, you can't even get a gym membership. You can't get a gym membership without it. You can't get, a membership anywhere else like for example if you wanted to have a supermarket membership you can't get that you can't book a, an appointment for doctors you can't get that because you have to be registered to something called 1177 you like there's so many things that you cannot do so the first things first before you even get into the country i would say try sort out your mobile bank id in the country that you're in i know that there's a few Swedish embassies around the world. Now in the UK, we have our own Swedish embassy and you can sort out your mobile bank ID through the Swedish embassy. So I would recommend doing that before you get here because otherwise you'll be stuck like I was. Like I think it took about a month and a half for me to get my mobile bank ID and to get my um, Swedish bank account because I had all my UK stuff and for work, they had to pay me my UK bank account, but I needed it to be paid into my Swedish one. So I had to make a Swedish bank account and transfer my details and then get my mobile bank ID from them, which took absolutely ages. So I would say sort that out before you leave. Another thing that I wish I knew before I moved to this country is how hard it is to get home. Like right now I'm in the process of finding a home, of moving out and it's so, so difficult. Like in the UK, it's a simple thing. Like you go to an estate agent, you tell them how many bedrooms you want, you tell them how many baths you want or how many whatever. You just give your you give your like your requirements to their estate agent and then they find the homes for you and then you go and do the viewings and then you can sign for it and you show like your pay slips for the last three or six months, um, just so that they can see that you're able to pay for the rent, etc. In Sweden, there's this thing called Bullstars for Medlingen, which is like a queue and it's a queue for housing guys it's a queue for housing and you can be in this queue for years i have my cousin who's been in the queue since like 2004 it can really 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 be difficult to find somewhere to live i was lucky enough um and i thank god for this every single day that i was able to find somewhere before i actually landed so when i landed i already had this apartment it's very expensive because it's not part of those homes where you queue up for like this is a second hand home as in underhand if you're Swedish, you understand. It means second-hand home, as in I'm renting this place, not from the direct landlord, but the landlord's agent, if you know what I mean. There's so many queues. I, I don't know how many there are, but um, membership can cost somewhere from 120 crowns to 200 crowns per year, which is absolutely nothing. It's about 10 to 20 pounds. I just round it up, 10 to 20 pounds. Um, you pay that fee one time every year depending on how many queues you're actually in but what happened is say for example you find the house that you love you go on the house that you like that fits all your requirements you click that you're interested and it will show you what number you are in that queue for that specific house so you're not even guaranteed to get the house like you're now in another queue so first you're in a queue 
like a general queue then when you like a house and you sign up and say you're interested there's another queue because it's obviously other people interested in the home so it's really really confusing and i would say to sign up to these to these queues way before you arrive because at least then it gives you some time like i myself i'm in one queue and i've been in that queue for like nine months since i was here like i signed up as soon as possible um and i think i need to sign up to more but yeah it's just really difficult finding a home there's even a website called block it which is like our version of zupla in the uk or right move or something like that so but with that it's still like there's not many homes there that are first hand contracts so like landlord tenant kind of contract there's always a third party which means that it's always going to be more expensive so yeah that's one thing i wish i knew because had i joined these queues like even like i mean i'm I'm sure my parents had no idea but sometimes what parents do is they enter their children into these queues when they're really young so that when their children are older they have like the upper hand kind of wish my parents did the same but they might not have known because they were immigrants coming to this country so yeah it is what it is another thing I wish I had known and this is based on a social like this is a social issue and I wish that I had known how dead the nightlife is <laughs> like I don't know what I would have done with that information, but nightlife is dead here. Like there isn't any nightlife until it's summer. Like summer is the best time here. Like summer in Sweden is a good time, but nothing compares to the UK, man. Like nightlife doesn't compare to the UK. You can't beat it. And I just think that the UK or London in general, like it just has this, like it just has this vibe that you can't get anywhere else. Like Shoreditch. Box Park, you know, like Central London, Leicester Square, like there's just a vibe and I think it's more like the people that create that vibe. So whereas in Sweden they're more reserved, like you wouldn't get the same vibe that you get in London and I get it. But yeah, the nightlife is not really here and it's not really given what it's supposed to give. And I really wish it did. Fingers crossed I'll have good nights out because I've been out how many times? I've been out I think I've been out three times. And I've just seen it, I'm like, is this is this it? Like, there was one night which I had a really good night. It was good, but that's the night that I spent like 60 pound on drinks. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, I don't really buy drinks like that in the UK. But anyway, the fourth thing I wish I had known was how long it can snow and how long it's gonna be cold. Like, I love snow. I absolutely love snow. Like, ask all my friends, ask my family. Like, they know I am, I'm a snow fanatic, I'm not gonna lie, I am a snow fanatic. But it can snow for like three months on end. Now I'm not gonna lie, that's a bit too much. That's a bit too much. That's a bit too much for anybody, even the one that loves snow, like, can we just pipe down? Can we actually just pipe down? And the thing about it is like, say for example it snows on Monday. You can have it where on Wednesday there'll be no snow because it's rained and then it will crop back up on a friday and it's like mate can we calm down please can we actually calm down we're in march right now like we're approaching spring and everybody knows i'm a spring baby my my, my birthday's in spring and i don't want to have to go out and it's snowing on my birthday you know so i wish i had known that it was going to be like this and snow all the time because then i would have had appropriate attire and i would have bought like a big overall because i used to have overalls when i lived here like when i was a child and i freaking loved it i have pictures of them yeah i wish i had known so that the fifth thing i wish i had known is how expensive the food is like i will never forget this so i remember my first day here my first day here i went to Ika. i had no idea about all these like supermarkets because i was young like i'm not gonna lie the only places i used to go is the places my parents took us um so I didn't really know about the supermarkets or where they are located. So I remember Googling the nearest supermarket near me and I took a little walk, you know, excited to do my little food shop. And I remember I got there and I was like, <clears throat> I was looking at prices of stuff because I don't really understand. At the time, I didn't really understand the currency like that. Um, but in my head, I was just rounding things up. So if things were like 34 crowns, I would just say it's £3.40, you know, just adding a decimal in the middle just to kind of you know anyway i remember i think i picked up like three things i think it was like bread milk and butter yeah it was bread milk and butter at the time and i think eggs or something yeah bread milk butter and eggs 
and the total came up to 15 pounds the total came up to 15 pounds sterling guys sterling not <laughs> sterling 15 pounds sterling i know you guys are looking at me like this girl's crazy that's cheap no it's not in lidl i can do a whole shop and get a whole bag full of groceries for 10 pounds i was so flabbergasted i remember coming home and i was like hold on I think I checked my Monzo and I checked the exchange, exchange rate and I was like, hold on, I've just got three things. Now in the UK, the reason why we can get 10 pound shop is because milk, no more than two pounds. Milk is like one pound 20, right? Bread is like one pound, that's already two pound 20, right? Um, eggs, maximum two pounds. Maximum two, one pound 69 in little babe. So that's already four pound 20. So you mean to tell me that I've spent an £11 top up on what I would usually spend just to buy three things. Oh, Lord have mercy. I really wish I knew how expensive the food would be because maybe otherwise I might have saved up a whole 15 grand food budget because I'm so sorry. Like, it's too much. It's too much. Like, bread is £4. You go to the shop, it's like 40, I was going to say 43, 43 crowns for bread. That's £4.30 in my eyes. That's literally £4.30. Like round it, okay, if it was the actual exchange rate, I think it'd be £3 something, but still, that, my darling, is extortionate. Like we're not in Waitrose or in M&S, babe. We're in the corner shop, Ica. Like it should never be that price. But what I've learned and what I've realized is that certain supermarkets, depending on the area that they're in, are cheaper. So what I tend to do is I tend to go out a little bit further out to do my food shopping because I do live in an expensive area Like my area is super expensive and I do love the area, but it's just too much like so what I tend to do is I go out further out I think I walk about 15 minutes and then I do my little shopping there and then I get a cab home Bob's your uncle I go to the shop called Willie's but yeah these are just a few things that i wish i had known let me know if you want to see more of these or if you want to see other sweden related videos if so let me know exactly what you want to see in the comments but yeah guys this was it for my video i hope you liked it um make sure you like comment subscribe and i will see you next time